One of my favorite complications has to be the world timer. I just love a world timer. I love the dials when they're executed properly. And it's very hard to execute the dial of a world timer properly. And there's a few reasons for that. It's going to be cluttered by nature. And usually that clutter means it's gonna to look too complicated and overbearing when you're looking at the time. However, some watches just get it right. And today I have one of those. This is the Omega Aquaterra World Timer. It's absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna do plenty of macro video on this because the dial is phenomenal, especially that little map in the middle. It's just beautiful, lots of layers here. Really a beautiful watch. Let's flip the camera, take a look. And like I said, lots of macro today, so stay tuned. A beautiful watch deserves a beautiful box, and this is a beautiful box. It's very heavy, it's lacquered, has the Omega logo here in a metal finish, and then there is lacquer over that. There's a push button closure, you open it up, and of course, here is the watch. Now, this watch was lent into the channel by exquisitetimepieces.com, and it was lent into the channel, as I mentioned. They don't support the channel in any way, except for lending me watches like this and allowing me to check them out, which I really do appreciate. So, guys, if you are interested in this watch or any watch uh, from, uh, you know, many major brands that they carry, check out their website. I will put a link to their website down below. Uh, it's exquisitetimepieces.com. They are located in Naples, Florida, so they do have a brick-and-mortar store. If you are in the area, definitely check them out. Tell them that Watch Chris sent you. But really, like I said, they don't support the channel in any other way except for lending me watches, and I very much appreciate it. So getting on with the review, here is the watch. One of the things I love about World Timers is the fact that you have a little map on the dial. It's one of my favorite things, and it's sort of a purpose too. So there's a purpose to it. It's not just there because you want to put a map on the dial. It looks cool, but it also is kind of functional because it is a world timer and tells you immediately this is a world time watch. Now it does complicate the dial a lot. So this is a complicated dial. Let's get right into it. The center of the dial is a map. It's a laser etched map. It has a lot of texture to it, a lot of colors. It looks very vibrant really well made. I have a few world timers in my collection and I think this is one of the nicest maps that I've seen on a world timer in person. Now there are other ones out there that are hand painted and things like that but this has a lot of depth to it and there's a lot of character to it as well so it's very very good. They did a good job. Outside of that around that map is a 24-hour scale. That's a glass piece. Uh, I don't know if it's sapphire but I believe it is. That has printed on it a 24-hour scale. That's how you tell the time around the world. So there are 24 locations printed on the dial itself. Get back to that in just a second. Outside of that, there's another sort of layer of the dial. That's a little bit of a teaked area, sort of giving a nod to other Aquaterras that came before it. So you still have that teak on the dial, uh, sort of slots going uh, from top to bottom of the dial. Then you have applied indices. They're sort of dagger or dart indices. Those actually have loom in them, so we will do a loom shot towards the end. Uh, I'm not sure how much loom is uh, in those darts, but it is loom, so we'll do a loom shot. Then you have the Omega logo there at the 12 o'clock index, right below the 12 o'clock index. Sort of replacing the 6 o'clock index, you have a date. Uh, this is the 8938, which is the world time caliber. It's METOS certified. You get 60 hours of power reserve. 15,000 gauss. It's uh, anti-magnetic. So a lot goes into these movements. It's also a very good looking movement. So you can see it from the back. There's a sapphire crystal. I'll show you that in just a second as well. Outside of the dial, there is a track of locations. Then inboard of that, there's another track of locations. So there's two tracks. In red is London or GMT time. That's down by the six o'clock. Then anything that is in the silver color, that is daylight savings time. So areas that uh, at an hour during the summer. So that is daylight saving times, locations. And then there is blue, the last color on the dial. Those are areas that do not observe daylight savings time. So interesting style, interesting way of executing this. And essentially the way it works is 
you know, you have a screwed in crown, you have a screwed in case back, you have 150 meters of water resistance. So this is really truly a go anywhere and do anything watch because you do get that water resistance, 150 meters. You can do anything you want in the water with this watch and really obviously anything on land as well. When you pull the crown all the way out, it hacks and you can set the minute hand. So you can see, once you put it in one position, so click it in one position, you see it's non-hacking and then the hour hand will jump. So that is something that all Omega movements do now and a lot of other brands have started doing this as well. It's a very good little option to have. So when traveling, all you need to do is jump or uh, you know advance or move back one hour, you could use that position. This also changes the date. Uh, so all you have to do is go cycle through and it will change the date there at six o'clock. So that's really it. And the way that you tell the time is through that uh, 24 hour scale in the center. So when you pull it out and the movement hacks, you then advance the minute hand and you'll see that track moving. So as it turns on the dial, wherever there is one of these little arrows or chevrons, I don't know what you would actually call it. It's sort of pointing to the track. So that's telling you what time it is in the location that it's aligned with. So that's basically it. It's pretty easy to tell the time on here. Um, is it useful? Is it very legible? Those are all questions that I think a lot of people ask when it comes to um, world timers because they are pretty complicated. You see that the bezel and the, uh, the inner bezels, I guess you would call them, or chapter rings or whatever you want to call them, it's pretty complicated. There's a lot going on on this dial. So looking at the time in different locations at a glance is a little bit harder. So you will need to really look at your watch to uh, know what time it is and say, you know, Auckland or something like that. Um, but there you go. And it has a screwed in crown, as I mentioned, 150 meters of water resistance. You have the logo on here, the Omega logo. It's a 43 millimeter watch. Um, just do measurement really quickly. So it's 43 millimeters. It's on the thicker side, but it is automatic. You get to see the movement from the back. It has a lot of depth to the dial. So 14 millimeters is on the thicker side. The um, crown, 6.7 millimeters. The lug to lug is on the larger side as well. So this does wear a little bit larger than the 43 millimeters. So definitely something to keep in mind. But the actual lug to lug is 48.8. The Effective lug to lug is 52.6, somewhere around there, 52.3. Uh, the only things I don't like about this watch, the one thing I don't like about it is the strap. I don't like this extra metal that they put in the strap for one reason or another. I don't like that it has molded ends on the strap. The strap itself is really nice. It's all one piece. They make it look like it's two different pieces or three different pieces. So you have this stitching here, which really doesn't do anything. It doesn't hold anything together. Then you have this weave down the middle. And then you have some ridges on the back, which just, uh, you know, relieve air through the, uh, or, or allow air to go through uh, to cool off your wrist. You get to see the movement from the back. It's a really good looking movement. Omega do a great job with these. Uh, you have that spiral that comes out of the center. Everything spirals out of the center of the watch, which looks really cool. I really like that. It just looks great. Um, the buckle is sort of Omega's, you know, go-to buckle. No loops here, which I really like as well. Uh, I think this is pretty nice. It's just, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the molded end links. Uh, I would actually prefer this without the metal here. If they did that, I think this would look even more elegant in a way. Um, you have this beautiful curvy case. Uh, I don't think you need this extra metal here for some whatever reason they do that. I don't know. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to throw it on my wrist. Then we're going to do a loom shot. We'll talk about price as well. So uh, today on my wrist, I have my AP Royal Oak. This is the Royal Oak Offshore Diver. A very heavy, very big watch that I do not wear very often these days uh, for one reason or another, but I really do love the watch. I just wish that it was a little bit more comfortable. This is a very comfortable watch. You throw it on your wrist, it, it does wear very nicely. I have a seven and a half inch wrist, so it doesn't wear big on my wrist, but it does wear like a 43 or 44 millimeter watch, in my opinion, because of the lug width, the uh, extra girth to the watch, the 14 millimeters, it does wear bigger or as big as the dimensions suggest. Uh, but all in all, a very good looking watch. Now this is 
$8,900. So this is on the more expensive side for an Aquaterra. Uh, but considering the amount of detail and the layering in this dial, I don't think it's an incredibly uh, absorbent price. I think it's a pretty good price for a really well-executed uh, world timer. There are world timers out there that look good, but aren't as functional. Uh, they also look good, but maybe don't look as good as this. The map on here is pretty phenomenal for the price. It is not handmade. Obviously, that's not a hand-painted dial. It almost looks like it is. It really, it does look very, very good. Only up close will you notice that it's not hand-painted. Very quickly, let me throw it under some UV light and we'll do a quick loom shot. But before we do, don't forget, again, I just want to bring up exquisitetimepieces.com. They lend watches into the channel all the time and I very much appreciate it. Uh, definitely check them out if you are interested in really any watches. They carry Seiko, Grand Seiko, Omega, all the brands that I talk about here on the channel. Uh, and they are really nice people over there and they lend me watches. They get them to me so quickly. Um, just professional people. They have a really awesome brick and mortar store, uh, which I hope to eventually visit very soon. I'll be going to Florida in a few months, so hopefully I can visit them. I would love to check them out in person. So anyway, very quickly, a loom shot, and then we'll wrap up the video. So loom is okay. Nothing incredible, but it's not bad. You have loom on all of those little daggers, as I mentioned. Just a little bit of loom at the 12 o'clock and a little bit of loom at the six o'clock uh, and the hands are loomed. And of course that second hand is loom. You have that arrow uh, minute hand and then you have sort of have a dagger um, hour hand. So looks very good. Uh, nothing too incredible, but you know, the fact that it has loom is nice. Usually watches like this, they are not very good with loom, uh, but they did a decent job here. Uh, anyway, tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? I think a lot of people really like this watch. I am one of them. Like I said, my only qualm about this watch is the strap. Uh, I would get this on the bracelet because they do make it on a bracelet. They make it on a leather strap as well. I don't know if the leather strap also gets this extra metal. I just genuinely don't know why they put that in here. Uh, but it's just a design cue that... I don't find aesthetically pleasing. That doesn't mean it's not, you know, made well and it's, you know, nice, I guess. But for me, it's not. That's it. I would go for the bracelet no matter what, though, uh, and then add my own strap. And these buckles you can get pretty easily. So that's the way I would go with most watches, especially a watch like this, because the bracelet is actually very nice on here. And, uh, you know, you have that micro adjust on the fly. That's excellent. You really can't go wrong. And that makes this even more go anywhere and do anything, in my opinion. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Tell me what you think of this watch. Also, don't forget to check out exquisitetimepieces.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe here to my channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.